Minister Morel, uh, welcome first of all to Raisana and to the special Facebook live session at the sidelines of the Raisana Dialogue. It's great having you here. Let me ask you, start with a very fundamental question. Uh, since your government has come to power, you have definitely, Spain has definitely been more engaged, would you say, with the European project? And if so, why? Well, uh, Spain as a society, as a country, has always been very much engaged with the European project. And during the socialist government, we play a very important role with Felipe González, who was minister at that time. Later, with the Popular Party government, our engagement decreased. And now, with Pedro Sánchez, we are going to go back to play an important role because this government defines itself as being especially pro-European. But this is happening at a time when the European project itself seems to be under some kind of stress. Uh, we are seeing developments in, you know, the, the rise, populist governments are rising in, uh, you've seen in Italy, in Hungary. Uh, the champion of uh, Euro unity, Macron, is under great stress domestically. And of course, there is this uh, terrible divorce going on with the Great Britain. So what is the future of the European project? Uh, if Europe didn't exist, wouldn't exist, we should invent it. I think the world will be much more insecure, much more unstable without the European Union. The Europeans need Europe, but the world as a whole requires a power, a democratic power, engage with civil rights, with climate change, with equality, like Europe it is. So uh, it's true, we are in a difficult situation, mm, we lack leadership, migration puts difficult problems to solve to the European society. There is a divide east-west about migration, north-south about economic issues, mm -hmm. but nevertheless this project is one of the most important things that the humankind has been able to do, to change war by peace, to change confrontation by cooperation, to change the rule of power by the rule of law. All these things represent the European Union and I think it, it needs to be preserved. So you said if Europe did not exist as an entity, it would need to be re, you know, invented. It would need to be invented. Uh, my question is, do you think in certain ways it is time uh, that the EU reinvent itself and if that is indeed the time, what kind of reinvention, reconfiguration, realignment would you think in terms of the EU? You are right. The European Union itself has to be reinvented. The European Union is something that was invented in the past century. It was an invention in the middle of the 1950s in order to solve the problems between Europeans, the intra-European problems, to make peace among us. At that time, the globalization was still not there. At that time, the borders were still closed. Financial flows were much smaller. It was a bipolar world, the states and the Soviet Union. This world has disappeared. Globalized, open, no borders, capital flows, multipolar, and we have to adapt to this new world. The European Union was something invented to create peace among Europeans. Now it has to be invented to protect Europeans in face of the rest of the world. The inter-European problems has been solved. Now we have to solve the problems of Europe facing the global world. So you think that Europe now needs to uh, you know, kind of evolve a bigger security agenda, which so far has not existed as part of the European Union? If so, how do these countries come together to actually create a common security agenda? Is, is, there, is there even a commonality of views there? When you ask people through the Eurobarometer, when you ask Europeans, are you in favor of a European army? Are you in favor of an external European security policy? Massively, they say yes, because they know that it will be much better for us if we put together our capacities, military and diplomatic capacities. The problem is not with the people. The problem is with the governments. Governments are 
reluctance to lose capacities, to lose competences. They are still digesting the euro. With the euro, they lost a lot of capacities. They lost the monetary policy. And now they are reluctant to lose uh, another capacity, the military one, the diplomatic one. But sooner or later, and I hope sooner than later, we will have to realize that none of us, even the biggest, Germany, is big enough in order to survive in the globalized world. And I am sure that not the 27, I am not counting Britain anymore, not the 27, but the hardcore of the European countries who already share the currency, who already share the borders, will share the military and diplomatic power. There is, a, you, you said something about, you know, the bipolar moment having ended and we having moved towards a unipolar, uh, a multipolar world. Now my question is that uh, there are certain powers that now believe that we are back in a bipolar world, we are back in a new Cold War. Mm -hmm. And that's the so-called trade war which began between the United States and China is now leading to a, it, it, it's more than a trade war. There are very fundamental differences of values which are coming in the way. There, there, there are differences of strategy, there are differences of uh, how the world is to be imagined. Now, when these differences exist, and we're talking really about a new Cold War, where does Europe find itself uh, when it comes to these alignments? Europe represents the capacity of avoiding a new bipolar world. If Europe exists as a power, I always talk about the three P's. Peace, prosperity, and power. If Europe represents really peace, prosperity, and power, not just soft power, a strong power, then the world will not be bipolar. Then we are not going to face a, a new Cold War, because it will be a third agent that could balance the geostrategic and geopolitics in the world. Yes, we can face a new Cold War. The front line will be no longer in Europe. The front line will be nearby here in the Pacific and the Asian will be China and the States. Mm -hmm. And the war will be more a technological war than a trade war. But if Europe exists, I think it can contribute to balance the world. See, contributing to the dissonance at the moment, you know, there was, there was a rules-based international order, a liberal rules-based international order. But uh, today the dissonance has actually come from some of the deepest supporters of that older rules-based international order. And what we are seeing is a breakdown of the Atlantic consensus, which was fundamentally the bedrock mm -hmm. of what had ensured the peace and prosperity of this world for the last 70 years. Now, with, do you, first of all, do you think there is a breakdown of the Atlantic consensus, which is leading to the kind of new tensions uh, you are seeing uh, across the world? Well, it would be difficult to deny that the bedrock of the transatlantic relation is maybe not broken, but damaged. When the new president of the United States says that he considers Europe as a foe, one gets shocked. You know? How could be a foe of the United States? But the fact is that the new ruler of the United States doesn't like the European Union because the European Union is the sum of multilateralism. It's a co concentré of multilateralism, something that he doesn't like. But uh, it's deeper than that. I think the problem is not just Trump. The problem comes before Trump came to the presidency. It has been little by little after the end of World Cold War a different approaches of the problem of the world from the states and yeah. the European Union. Take climate change, for example. Take migration, for example. Take the, the same understanding of how to rule the world. The approaches are different, completely different. So it's not strange that today we have a certain, I wouldn't say confrontation, but uh, differences on how to deal with the world problems. That's a new fact. 
on the, on so the thank you very much, uh, Minister Morel, for being with us, joining us at this Facebook Live session. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you to you for this invitation.